Hello, this is Karen Hudis. I'm speaking to you on the 22nd of June, which is when my videographer was able to meet with us. And I'm delighted to be with you all. This video is going to be called, We're All In This Together, because that is exactly what the situation is. And I'm a real person. I wanted to tell you that although I'm speaking now on behalf of all of the military powers of the world, that is, the ones that are honest and backing the people, I don't have a swollen head. It's just like Will Rogers said, um, I forget exactly when he said it, but he said, if you think you're a person of great importance, just try calling somebody else's dog because we're individuals and we have, we have um, people that know us and animals that know us and we're all in this together. So I don't think I'm important. I think I'm just one of the people that knows that our world has been totally screwed up and it's been screwed up for a very, very long time. And I'm allowed to be speaking on behalf of everybody. And I'll tell you how come that is. That's one of the things. But the second thing I want to tell you is that I'm just a human being. I'm a human being like every other individual human being. And I don't think I'm more important than any other human being. But I do think that human beings are extremely important. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about. I just got back from my doctor, Dr. Charles Gant, and Dr. Gant is a scientist. He's done a study of the brain, the human brain, and he found out that we're immortal. And he can tell that. He can tell that from his studies and also because he's part of something called the critical mass. The critical mass, that's enough people that understand that something is true. And when you understand, enough people understand that something is true, something very significant happens. Reality changes. A lot of people don't know that, but that's something that Japanese scientists discovered back in the 1950s. But I don't want to bore you, actually, because that's one of the things that I've been doing. That's one of the mistakes I've been making. Um, I'm learning on the job how to be something called the Overseer Mandate Trustee. I worked in the World Bank Legal Department for 21 years. And during that time, I worked with all the people that were in the World Bank that were honest and that understood what the real values in life are. And in particular, there was one man, Peter Steck. He was the man who represented the Dutch government, and he was very honest. And I became a personal friend of his, and I became a personal friend of um, his wife. And another person I became a personal friend of were two very close friends of his. And these people, they happened to be people that I sang in a Lutheran church choir for 10 years. How, how could that happen? All of these coincidences happen. It happens because the world is a lot different than we know. And I was starting to tell you about the corruption. There's been terrible corruption in place for thousands of years, 10,000 years. And that corruption has made it very difficult for people to understand what the actual reality is. And I don't want to scramble and jump around because it gets to be confusing, but I do have to tell you how you, you've been um, hoodwinked, how you've been duped, and how, um, how it can be that I'm telling you something which is so different from what you've normally heard. That's because of this 10,000 year corruption. That's enough time for people to be given the wrong information. 
Now, it's not totally wrong. It's got to have some truth to it, or people would be thrown off right, right off the bat. When things are uh, part, partly true and uh, partly scrambled up, the people that are doing that, they're called controlled opposition. And that's the way dishonest governments have kept power because they've told their people enough, enough true and enough false things to get other countries angry and in, in war, perpetual war. And that's how come people get confused about who we are. They think that people are bloodthirsty. They think they like fighting. They think um, they like wars, but we're actually a lot kinder. And I was going to tell you about the Japanese scientists back in the 1950s. They found out something called the hundred monkey effect. They were studying a bunch of, um, and I've forgotten the name of that species. Uh, that's one of the uh, reasons that I usually use teleprompters, because I can't keep track of all these things. But um, anyway, uh, whatever that breed of monkey was, they, they were studying it on an island, and they found out that some monkeys, once enough monkeys realized that it was better to wash sweet potatoes in the ocean so that they wouldn't be too sandy, all of a sudden, all of the monkeys of that species, whether they were uh, in the islands or wherever they were, knew that they were supposed to wash sweet potatoes. That's because there's something called the collective unconscious. Monkeys, when they think, they don't just think with their own individual brains. What they do is their monkey, their, their brains are like modems, which is to say that um, some of the things are the individual monkey thinking, and some of the things are sent off to a central processing unit for that breed of monkey. And that, when, when enough monkeys realize something is true, that information becomes available to all the monkeys of that species. And that's what's happening with human beings, although we've got a, a different problem. Human beings are pretty smart, and some human beings have discovered how to scramble the uh, communications. A modem, you know what a modem is. It sends information from one place to the other. So the military um, scientists, have gotten together and they figured out how to send them information back to the individual monkey. And that monkey then thinks whatever the people in that central processing unit want that monkey to think. So a lot of people are being controlled by mind control, but it doesn't work if a monkey can't be hypnotized. There are some people whose brains don't pick up those, those um, signals very well, and they act independently. And so what you have is in, in the world, there are enough people whose brains are not being hijacked by this, it's called mind control technology. And I'm one of the people who can't be hijacked. Um, I can't be hypnotized. Um, now, it's not 100%. I'm susceptible a little bit, and so that's how I know that uh, there is such mind control, and I know how it feels, and I know sometimes that the thoughts that I think are my very own thoughts are stupid, and so I've learned, and it's not easy, but I've learned that if I think something is a real good idea very quickly, and I don't have a to enough time to process that, then I'll make stupid mistakes. So that way I understand that there is this very powerful technology, but if you know that it's there, you can also learn that uh, what, what you have to do not, not to be susceptible. Now, what I wanted to do, other than bore you, is I wanted to um, tell you, uh, I'll skip ahead a little bit. You know, I've, I, I had my, uh, bone broken. 
Uh, that was to slow me down. And I had some caregivers who came. Um, I was released from the hospital very soon because I wanted to be home so that I could start telling people and the military powers of the world especially about what was really going on in reality because enough people in the critical mass understand that we're actually in a new reality. And so some of the people in the critical mass, um, my caregivers, have decided that we're going to, um, we're going to sing a special song that was uh, very popular. It was, it's in, mostly popular in um, Africa. And one of the significant things about it, um, and we'll be talking about this in the next video I do, it's that the black people, they've been fighting these corrupt people that were in power ever since 10,000 BC. They're the ones that have been the real heroes. They're the ones, well, I don't want to tell you the whole story for the second video. What I wanted to do is to emphasize how human beings are really, we're immortal. We have immortal souls. And so some of us um, have been singing a prayer. It's called Jerusalem Maya. And I'm going to sing that for you. And I do have to get um, some help with that because I'm not like an opera singer. I can't memorize a foreign language. So I'm going to have to sing along with uh, something recorded. So we're going to do a little break now so that I can get the teleprompter for that. 